I truly love a good buying opportunity in the stock market, and dividend investors, we've certainly seen a lot of these recently. Stocks are starting to correct, prices are starting to get more attractive, and it's a good opportunity right now to achieve starting yields that we have not seen in many years. And I don't think that this is the end of it. I think we're just getting started here. I think the market correction in dividend paying stocks and overall is going to continue. I think at some point in the future, we're gonna see far better prices than we're seeing now. That being said, I am a buyer right now because I like to dollar cost average in over time. I like to build my stock portfolio in dividend paying stocks, stocks that pay income, passive income that I can use to pay the bills. I like to buy these stocks regularly. And when I see buying opportunities, I see stocks that I love, household brands, literally fall 10% in a single day. In, on my opinion, very inconsequential news, I just love these opportunities. When everyone else is running, everyone else is scared, this presents an amazing opportunity for dividend investors like myself to seize the opportunity. And so today I wanna to talk about a stock that I'm buying right now. This is one where I'm totally seizing the opportunity. I was so happy to see this stock fall 10% the other day. I wanna talk all about why it fell 10%, what I think about it. I wanna talk about the bigger picture, the financials, and what's going on in the stock market right now. And I'm talking about Starbucks. Let's get started. So welcome to the video today, everyone. Thank you for being here. By the way, I've been receiving a lot of subscriber requests recently for various videos. One of the videos that I've been receiving a lot of requests on is waste management, ticker symbol WM. I'm going to get to all of those subscriber requests, so please hang in there. They're coming up. I have a whole list of these requests, but I wanted to bump this one, this video, to the top of the queue today because it's very timely. If you're a dividend growth investor or if you're just an investor in general, You've probably noticed the other day that Starbucks literally tanked. There was a day where it tanked 10% in a single day. I don't think I've ever seen that before with this kind of company, with this amazing brand, this blue chip company, this darling of Wall Street that everyone seems to love. I have never, and myself included by the way, I have never seen it fall that much in a single day before. And so I wanna talk about this, but before we even talk about Starbucks, I own Starbucks in my portfolio, by the way, and I'm adding more. I wanna talk about another stock, Campbell's Soup. I've talked about Campbell's Soup recently. I'm gonna give a little bit of background here. Just about a month or so ago, this stock tanked as well. It fell 10% or so in a single day. It just tanked. It's already been in a downward trend. There's a lot going on with that stock. I'll link in the description below to the videos I've done on Campbell's Soup. But I wanna give just a little bit of evidence here why I like buying stocks when they go down. Well, Campbell's Soup, it tanked, I bought on uh, May 22nd, and I bought at $34.33. Fast forward, just over a month later, as of June 27th, Campbell's Soup has rebounded, it's at 39.89, I'm up 16%. Basically, I am up 16% in just over a month. And look, I don't invest for capital appreciation. If you've been following me, you know that I invest for dividends and cash flow. But the fact of the matter is this is evidence. This is evidence right here that a stock, when it has tanked, oftentimes, at least in my case, when it's a stock I already own in my portfolio, it's a stock I know very well, it's a stock I like, that I want to add to over time, if I see a buying opportunity, I see a sale, oftentimes when I go for it, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. And look, I didn't expect Campbell's Soup to rise 16% in one month. And honestly, I don't really care because I'm not in this for the capital appreciation. In fact, I wish it stayed down. I wish it stayed lower because I might have bought more. Now I probably won't be adding any more other than reinvesting the dividends because it's come up a lot. And um, the reason it's up, by the way, is Kraft Heinz and other people may be looking to acquire this company. And um, boy, if they do, I sure hope that Kraft Heinz does a um, all stock deal because then I can just pivot into owning Kraft Heinz. But if they buy it out for cash, 
and I get a cash payout, boy, I'm gonna be um, unhappy about that, but we'll see. Um, it, it's, it's a good problem to have, certainly a good problem to have, similar to what I faced most likely with Dr. Pepper Snapple. I'll link in the description below to that case study as well in case you're interested in checking it out. But the meta level point here is, I own a bunch of dividend stocks, 37 to be exact. Sometimes on a day-by-day -day basis, one of them may tank. Usually if a stock tanks and um, I feel that the valuation is reasonable, I feel that the future prospects are reasonable, I understand what's happening and I believe the company can get past it, I like to buy, I like to average into my position, I like to buy more at the bargain basement prices. And I did that with Campbell's Soup and this is just evidence right here that the strategy has typically worked for me in the past. But again, this is capital appreciation. I don't really care about capital appreciation, but it paints a picture. It paints the picture that usually when everyone else is running, everyone else is selling. In fact, I got a comment here. There was someone here on this channel that commented, I told you guys, I told you guys about PPCE and I told you about him. He actually put something kind of nasty, but he said, look, this guy is buying Campbell's Soup. I told you he's no good. Well, look, I bought Campbell's Soup and I'm up 16% in just over one month. And so anyways, this is, this is what I'm talking about. When everyone else is running, when everyone else thinks it's a bad idea, if one has conviction, one believes in their holdings, when these buying opportunities, they present themselves, I like to seize the opportunity. Anyways, I'm gonna move on to Starbucks now they're at uh, $49.84 per share now a bargain basement price it's at a 52 week low and this stock plummeted it plummeted 10% in a single day why did it do this they um, basically had this strategic priority press release that came out on June 19th and Starbucks came forth and they said hey our fiscal third quarter same store sales growth is going to be worse than we expected. It's going to be 1% globally speaking same store sales growth as compared to the same quarter last year. And um, they almost did this to kind of, I would say, preemptively warn the street to warn everyone out there that when the third quarter results come out, they're not going to be as good as, as what one may expect. That being said, 1% same store sales growth is not the end of the world because quite frankly, when you look at fiscal Q2, the same store sales growth was 2%. So they're basically saying instead of our same store sales growth being 2%, now it's going to be 1%. Does that warrant the stock going down 10% in a single day? I certainly don't think so, but I love these buying opportunities. But anyways, what else did they do? They basically talked about a bunch of strategic priorities. This is how we're going to get the business back on track. This is what's happening. One of the things that they actually um, did is they said they're also going to close 150 stores. Boy, I love this. When People got their hands on this. They got their hands on the fact that Starbucks is gonna close 150 stores. And these stores are going to be in the US, by the way. Typically, over the long term, they indicated that they've closed about 50 stores per year in the US on average. And so they're gonna do 150 um, going forward in, within the next um, year. And so this is going to be more than usual. Let's put this in perspective. This company has 27,339 stores globally. 27,000, they are closing 150 of them. That is nothing, it is a drop in the bucket. But you wouldn't believe, if you go online and you, you look at some of the comments, some of the discussions that are happening out there about Starbucks, you even read some of these news articles and the way the uh, general public or the general investing public is talking about it, they would think that the world is over, that the world is ending, that Starbucks is going to go out of business because they are forced to close these 150 stores. When a company owns 27,000 stores, of course there are going to be always stores that need to be closed. There are always going to be non-performers. There are always going to be stores where it just does not make sense. I'll give you a related example. I have over 9,000 subscribers now on this channel. I am so blessed, so thankful. Thank you, thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't already, I please ask you to subscribe. It means the world to me. If I look at my stats on YouTube, I see that my subscribers are steadily growing. But you know what I also see? Every single month I lose subscribers. And I lose actually a good chunk of subscribers. For whatever reason, there are subscribers out there 
that churn. They're like, hey, I learned enough about this dividend stuff. I want to move on to something else. Maybe they're just tired of dividend investing. I don't know, but it, I, I look at it as kind of like pruning the portfolio, just like I would prune my stock portfolio or Starbucks is pruning their, their retail portfolio. There's always going to be with anything in life, a port, when one's looking at a portfolio approach, there's gonna be some growth, and that growth is always coupled with some loss. That's just how it works, and it's the right thing, it's optimized. These, the, looking at my YouTube channel again, the people who've churned, it's probably good they churned because they didn't wanna subscribe anymore. Same with uh, my stock portfolio. If there's a certain stock, for example, it makes sense to prune. It's very, very rare, but I'll tell you, I'll link in my description below. I did my five top investing mistakes of all time. There's one stock, a BHP Billiton, that I had to prune a number of years back. I'm really pr happy that I did that. It happens. Same with Starbucks. They have 27,000 plus stores and they are going to prune 150 of them in the US. It's going to be the best thing for this company. And so the fact that people are freaking out over this, in my opinion, it's a non-event. Certainly this company has gotten some bad press this year. In the last 12 months, there's been some incidents, there's been some challenges, nothing that they cannot get past. But I think people are buying into these things too much and I think they're overreacting to this news. What else do they talk about? There's a positive thing there. This is a channel about investing for dividends. I invest in Starbucks because I want Starbucks to pay me cash dividends that I can use to go out and buy my Starbucks or buy whatever I want. And they just raised the dividend 20%. They did a 20% year over year dividend in, or 20% increase since the last dividend increase over the current amount. And this is amazing because they announced this a bit earlier than anyone is expecting. They announced this dividend increase sooner than expected. And we'll get into this in a minute, but Starbucks has a track record of increasing their dividend very quickly. I did a video on Starbucks a while ago. I'm gonna link in the description below. One of the key things that I discussed in that video is that I love this company because the starting yield, it's never that high, but the opportunity to receive a tremendous yield on cost, it's there because they raise it so quickly. This is an example, dividend up 20%. I cannot believe this. The company announces a 20% dividend increase and it tanks the stock price 10% in a single day. Just, just amazing, just fabulous, fabulous opportunity for dividend investors for myself in my humble, humble opinion. So that's what happened. There are a few other things, by the way, that happened. One of the things that was discussed is they are facing some issues in China. So meta level, Starbucks is growing fast in China. I love this about Starbucks. This is one of my favorite things about Starbucks. They are opening a new store in China every 15 hours. Let me repeat that. Starbucks is opening a new store, a brand new retail store in China every 15 hours. That is every 15 hours, less than one day. This is amazing. I can't even wrap my brain around this. It is so quick. I don't know how they even pull this off. If they're opening a new store in China every 15 hours and they have to close 150 stores because they're pruning the portfolio again, and they own 27,000 plus stores, Again, I don't see what the, um, what the panic is. I just don't, I don't get it, I don't see it, and that's why I believe it's a buying opportunity. But anyways, one of the things that happened, we're in, under what happened again, is in China, one of the things that was going on is there's these third-party companies, these, these, um, the best as I can understand it from what I've read from their press releases and the commentary online, is they literally had these third parties, these delivery services, showing up at Starbucks, literally clogging up the queue. They would order a lot of drinks and it would slow down the operation. They would pick up all these drinks and then go out and take them, deliver them to people. Um, I guess the equivalent here in the US would be something like an Uber Eats or a DoorDash, um, something like that. Anyways, Starbucks has seen a slowdown in those third-party um, delivery services and those third-party systems. And um, one of the one of the beliefs as to why this happened is it could be even regulatory. It could be regulations because they're from a customer experience standpoint, they were clogging up the the cafes. It may even be that the government had something to do with it. That's that's at least what I read into some of the commentary that I read online. 
The good thing about Starbucks, and you ask me, Ian, do you invest in technology companies? Yes, I do. Starbucks is one of my favorite technology companies. Did you know they have the number one payment processing app on uh, mobile devices? Let me repeat that. Starbucks does more transactions on the Starbucks app than Apple Pay, than, um, than Google Pay, than any of these things out there. Starbucks is number one, number one payment app. This is a technology company. This is an app company. It sounds to me like the solution to this challenge with these third parties in China, from what I've read from Starbucks, from others, is it's a technology fix. It is going, they're going to negotiate directly with these third party services. They are going to come to an agreement. They are going to find a way to make things more efficient. This is going to involve technology. Well, if the company that has the number one payment processing app in terms of um, paying on a smartphone cannot figure it out, no one can. And so anyways, I think this technology company will certainly be able to figure things out and move on to the next level. It's certainly a hiccup, but I think they'll be able to, to come out of this just fine. And so again, that's what's happening. That's why it's down. I personally think it's a non-event, but I wanna move on here to some other data. The dividend right now, they just increased it. They increased it 20%. It's amazing, what an amazing gift. Starbucks, as I had been buying it all these years, the starting yield had always been real low. It had always been kind of in that 1%, 1.5% range, real low. But I always bought it because I knew, hey, yield on cost is going to be phenomenal as they increase the dividend. For the first time ever, Starbucks starting yield right now, it's almost 3%. It's 2.89%. The current dividend is $1.44. I divide that by the share price, 289 very um, rare, I've never seen that before at Starbucks, and so it gives me confidence. I'm actually adding more to my position now. The reason I have that confidence, one of the reasons at least, is I love that starting yield. I think it's a really good dividend starting yield, one that investors have never really seen with Starbucks before. It's really exciting. And um, let's look at the P-E ratio. Right now, I'm looking at forward PEs. I'm not looking at, at, as much at trailing 12-month PEs because there's been a lot of one-time tax events with, with Starbucks, with other companies. The tax data is messy. Earnings per share data is messy. And so I'm looking forward. And I'm looking at the average analyst estimates. I looked for 2018, 2019. The average analyst consensus is coming in at 242 for 2018, 268 per share for 2019. I take those analyst estimates, I um, back into my P-E ratio, I take the price, I divided by earnings, earnings per share, I'm basically getting a, a forward P-E for 2018 of a 20.59, 2019 of an 18.6. Look, these aren't bargain basement P-Es. I would say a bargain basement P-E for Starbucks would it be anything around 17 or lower. 20, it's low, it's certainly lower than I have come to experience with Starbucks. This is a very fast growth company. This is a growth stock. This is a tech stock. It's a restaurant stock. It's a coffee stock. It's a bunch of things. And it's always been priced at a premium PE because it's growing quickly. In terms of getting in at like a 20, a PE of 20, I feel pretty good about that. Do I think it could go lower? Absolutely. Do I hope it goes lower? Absolutely. Do I wish I can get a PE of 15? Yes. Do I care if I start averaging in now and then the share price goes down more? No, I really look forward to that. I hope for that because I like to average in over time. And this is an important point. The buying opportunities out there, whether it's Campbell's Soup, whether it's Starbucks, they're just starting. And I think there could be uh, future opportunities. That being said, I like to seize the day because I never know. It could be like Campbell's. It could go right back up where I went 16% gain in one month. I hope that doesn't happen. I would rather have them stay down, but I've always had good luck with this strategy of buying when, when the stocks tank. And so again, I'm gonna start averaging in now. But anyways, 2018.6, these are reasonable forward PEs, certainly not bargain basement, but um, as about as reasonable as I've seen for Starbucks in recent history, and I, I feel confident buying at those PEs, but I hope I can get even better in the future. So fiscal Q2. Fiscal Q2 quarterly earnings report. Let's talk about that for a minute. I dug through it. I looked at a few things. There's some important insights in there. All of this what happened is kind of scary. We'll see what happens when they report fiscal Q3. But when I look at fiscal Q2, it's really good. Global same store sales, they're up 2%, 4% in China, which is what really matters in my opinion. The, um, the revenue is up 14%. 
Year over year, 14% revenue growth. They hit a record of six billion in revenue. Earnings per share were up 18% year over year. And their rewards program, their loyalty program, 12% growth in that rewards program. And so this is a company that is thriving. And now it, it seems like Q3 is gonna be a little softer. They're gonna have instead of their 2% same store sales, 1%. But the fact of the matter is I still expect revenue growth to be there, earnings per share growth to be there. A loyalty program to be increasing, everything to be moving in the right direction. And so again, this puts things in context. Yes, people are kind of scared now, but look, at a 20 PE, to have a company that's growing revenue 14% year over year in this kind of economy right now, where a lot of companies are kind of sluggish on revenue growth, the market is starved for growth, investors are starved for growth, I like having growth in my portfolio. This is one of my growth stocks. It's um, it's a really important growth stock, a solid medium position in my portfolio, and one that I love adding to. I just put things in perspective by looking at fiscal Q2. It looks pretty darn good, and yeah, fiscal Q3 might not be quite as good, but um, but certainly I think I think it's going to be great. Um, so, anyways. Looking at the, the annual report, next what I did is I looked at the 2017 annual report. One of the things I just want to point out again, 27,339 total stores. And they have two types of stores. They have company-owned stores. They have licensed stores as well. 48% of the stores are in the US, 52% international. Over the long run, I think that international bucket, it's going to continue to grow. And I really like that. I really value that. And so... I looked, they did um, like a five year breakout. They did fiscal 2017, 16, 15, 14, 13. I just put 17 and 13 here. I wanna look at some key things here. Revenue. When I look at this period, this five year period, revenue is goes from 11.79 billion to 17.65 billion. Revenue in this period is up 50%. 50% revenue growth, that is just fabulous. I look at operating income. It goes from losing money to making $4 billion. So that's pretty darn good. And um, the operating margin I like to point out is at a solid 23%. That is a really good operating margin, especially for a company that is operating in a retail environment. And some, some may argue like, hey, the cost of Starbucks is too high. Well, that high cost of Starbucks um, trickles down to an amazing operating margin for shareholders like myself. So I'm really, um, really pumped about that, really happy about that operating margin. Surely like a pure play tech company can get an operating margin that's really high, but it's easy for them because they don't have any physical storefront. The fact that these guys are a physical retail location and they have to actually source products like coffee beans and they have to turn it into coffee and um, they can do that with a margin as high as 23% operating margin, that's just fabulous. I move on to earnings per share. It goes from one penny in 2013 to $1.97 in 2017, enough said. The dividend, let's look at this. The dividend, $1.05, it's up from 44 and a half cents. It's up 136%. However, they raised it again. We, we talked about this earlier. They raised it again, it's now $1.44 per share per year paid in four, um, four quarterly installments. If I take the dividend they're paying now in fiscal 2018, I compare to fiscal 2013, it's up 224%. This is why I love Starbucks so much as a dividend investor. It's got so much going for it. It's got the, the revenue growth. It's got the world-class brand. It's got the international growth. It's got the good margins. But most importantly, it's got that dividend growth. The yield on cost, I don't need the money right now to pay my bills, but maybe 10 years from now I will. And I love the fact that they're growing the dividends so quickly because my yield on cost, my future dividend income, my yield divided by my cost, my dollar cost, it's gonna be really high. Whereas the starting yield right now is only 2.89% uh, only. It's pretty good for Starbucks. I could be getting a yield on cost upwards of 10% in the future because they're growing the dividends so quickly. And as long as revenue grows, as long as earnings grow, again, earnings are up in fiscal Q2, 18% year over year. If they can compound that for another five or 10 years, anything in that ballpark, it's just, it's just going to be phenomenal what they can continue to do with the dividend. And so I love that about this company. This is a great dividend company in my opinion and a solid, solid medium stock in my portfolio. So again, taking a step back here, 
Why did I do this video today? I did this video because it is all, in my opinion, about seizing a good opportunity. When an opportunity presents itself and a company like Starbucks is down 10% in a single day, I like to always remind myself, hey, Ian, go get a little more Starbucks. Add a little more to your portfolio. Yes, it could go down more, and I hope it goes down more, but it's always good to seize the opportunity because you never know. You never know if that is the bottom. You never know if that's the only opportunity. And so I always like to average in over time. And oftentimes when these opportunities present themselves and everyone is panicking, it's not really a big issue. Yeah, there's some stuff. There's rarely a stock sale without some kind of news, without some kind of issue going on at the company. But as long as the issue is not too big, as long as the issue is something the company can overcome, I like to seize the opportunity. And again, Campbell's Soup is another example. I seized the opportunity. I wish it was actually still headed lower, but it's already rebounded 16%. And that's kind of proof that, hey, Ian, yeah, good thing. Good, good job getting out there and seizing the opportunity. And so as a dividend investor, which stocks do you own? It's a lot easier, quite frankly, when you own stocks, um, when you already have a portfolio. I, I have 37. I rarely add new stocks. And I just look at my 37 stocks every single day and I look at them. How are they doing? Are some of them up or some of them down? I'm scrolling. Usually there's nothing, no action necessary. But sometimes I'm scrolling down my stocks. I'm like, okay, wait, Starbucks is down 10%. I better look into this. This looks like an opportunity. And I like to seize those opportunities in the moment. Thank you for watching the video today. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please give me a like, a subscription, a thumbs up. All of that means the world to me. It's the greatest way that you can support this channel. We are strong here. We are really strong on PPC Ian. This is a community now of over 9,000 dividend growth investors. I am so, so happy we've gotten this far and I think we will continue to grow. Everything is pointing in that direction because we've got a great community here of everyone supporting each other. Check out the comments below, jump into the conversation. Let's all talk about dividend stocks and how we're all going to reach financial freedom when our dividends are paying for our bills and paying for all of our bills. And um, even partial financial freedom as well. Every dividend check is a check that can be used to at a minimum, go out and, and grab a cup of Starbucks. So I love that about dividends. So please join the discussion. And um, thank you, by the way, for all the suggestions. Like I said, I'm going to have a waste management video on the way. I know that's one I've gotten like, I'd say almost like 20 different people asking me for this one. So thank you for your patience. It's on the way. And um, before we leave today, in terms of full disclosure, I am long. I own the stocks that I mentioned in the video today. And uh, those stocks are Campbell's Soup, ticker symbol CPB, Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX, and McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD. I own all three of those stocks in my portfolio. And if you wanna learn more about Campbell's Soup and McDonald's, I'm gonna link below in the description below to those videos. And um, also in terms of a disclaimer today, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. This video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you're gonna go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult a licensed financial advisor first. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And hey, before I leave, let me know, what do you think about Starbucks? Are you buying it now? Are you selling it now? Hopefully not selling, but I'd love all, all viewpoints on this one. Do you think the business is doomed? Do you think it's gonna make a comeback? Do you think it's, it's just business as normal, kind of like I do? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please include them in the comments below. Thanks again. I will see you in the next one.